Good evening, Australia. Welcome to the show. I'm Michael Kazilny. Tough times never last, but tough people do. You know, we've been doing this show for about eight years now, but tonight we've got a terrific fellow on. Uh, what I like about uh, Kappa, he's down to earth, he's real. In such a pretentious world, uh, uh, we're glad to have him. I, I think 124 games, 388 goals. Uh, thanks, bro, for coming along. Thanks, Mick. You know, when I spoke to you on the phone, it's like I've known you for years. We talk the yeah. same. We talk the bro talk. That's what a lot of my friends here. They, you know? I have a lot of fans come up and the girlfriend goes, do you know him? I said, no. Met him five minutes ago. He just loves the wizard Kappa. He's only human. <laughs> it all started off in Oakley. Uh, you became a superstar uh, football player. Is that right? 388 um, goals? Yeah, average is about 3.4, which is top 10 in the AFL. Yeah. But Michael, didn't happen overnight. Didn't happen overnight. I'll tell the fans how it started. Yeah. Um, eight years of age, played for uh, Oakley Youth Club. That's right. And I used to play for the um, Clayton Tech and also East Oakley Primary School yeah. and South Oakley on the Sunday. So it was um, four different teams. Took me a while to master it. Um, played four years at um, Oakley. Won, um, won about 16 best and fairest between us, me and the great Reese Jones. One sixteen, even though 12 worth of cricket, it's still a trophy. You've got to start somewhere, don't you? That's how it started, to be serious. And the, I got the phone call when I was about 14 to 15, and I got drafted for the South Melbourne. That's where the Army Reserve Cup started. Wow. Yeah, so I went down at 15. Couldn't get a game in the seniors first year, so I played in the thirds. 20 bucks a game. I thought, this is great, I've made it. It's better than playing for nothing for the last eight years. Played and how was school at that time? Were you, were you a good student? or you, it was I was a bit disruptive. In, on all my reports, I read last year, it said, Warwick's a great student. He's a born leader, entrepreneur, but very disruptive. <laughs> and he jumps from one subject to the other. <laughs> but I haven't got bipolar. I got checked. And um, that's when I started at Sydney, was out Melbourne. Kappa, yeah. it was a beautiful um, career. You, you, you um, liven up our screens uh, because you were different. You're, you're an entertainer. Tell me about... Um, uh, had, had you saw all these uh, boring uh, football players. What, what did you do different to uh, entertain Aussie audiences? Well, back in the 80s, it was pretty tough, right? There wasn't too many show ponies. Yeah. Um, maybe Gary Ablett Sr. That was about it, but he wasn't a show pony. He was just an excellent player. I was like his apprentice, but I thought I'd spunk things up a bit. Once I got a game, yeah. I won the best in first and seconds in South, South Melbourne. Yeah. Then they changed this name to uh, Sydney Swans, and I was lucky enough to be with two privately owned clubs, which helps get maximum exposure. And I thought, well, if I'm going to get a game, I'm a bit unorthodox, because I used to sit on heads and go, Kiapa, hey, you'll be all tea. Used to always milk it, had the nice rock star hair. Got sponsored by Adidas, had the first pink boots, white boots. What was your favourite band in those days? Uh, Duran Duran, you In too. Excess, and Kylie Minogue. Oh, mate, they're my three favourite bands. She was a friend of mine. So we love the 80s. Yeah. And I went and um, saw and a boy. You, you, you were upset when Michael Hutchins passed away. Yeah, that was bad. That was a bad, wasn't it? Because we both sort of went out with Kylie Minogue, both friends of her. Yeah. Her, isn't that? How, yeah. Couldn't believe that. I went and saw a boy, George, three months ago, the, my music bowl. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was unreal. Terrific. And then I went. Um, Actually played played drums for twenty years, had a number one record. I take what's mine. So 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 yeah. So back to the football. You um, you you uh, put on the show. You you were the um, well the John McEnroe. Of, yeah. Um, I was a bit of a naughty brat. Yeah. I thought once I get a game, I'm going to milk it to all it's worth. So my dad always says, "All good publicity is good publicity. Doesn't matter what it is, because today's news Warwick is tomorrow's fish and chips." Was Dad a good footy player? Yeah, he played Fitzroy seconds until Amazing. he broke his knee. Yeah. He, broke, he broke his ankle. Now, 1987 was a was a big game for you, a big year for you, wasn't it? Yeah, 86, uh, we, we played in the finals. Yeah. Lost both, kicked 92 goals in 1987. Like I said on another show, I opened Mike. Um, I, I got Mark of the Century. I got a car for that, kicked 103 goals, and we got in the finals and took the Mark of the Decade yeah. over Langford. And he still hates it because he gets that, that mark comes up every two weeks. I was there for about six and a half hours and thought, I better, I better mark this, Michael. It's going to be a free kick. And, and went sideways. So many amazing um, 
so many amazing moments of you on the field. Uh, once we uh, stop our professional career, um, it's it's a it's like um, a new world, isn't it? Yeah, well, I'm a bit left of centre, so I, I kept it going. Yeah. I learned a few tricks off Mark Jackson, who's been going 30 years. Yeah, he, he right. Got, he, yeah. Got, he got fired as a highwayman. <laughs> he was uh, my, my apprentice. A bit like Shane Warne. Shane Warne's a sort of um, yeah. um, more a capper's love child, so yeah. to speak, yeah. even though we're in the same business. And I told him that last week, and he goes, oh, shut up, Dad. I said, <laughs> I said, unfortunately, Shane, I look 10 years younger than you. OK, but when did you finish? What year and what, what sort of careers have you done since then? That's a good question, Michael. Finished in 92, 92. 91, 92. Yeah. I went to Sydney for 10 years, three years Brisbane, then back to Sydney. Yep. And the um, second part of the question was um, what I'm doing now. I've just sort of stayed in the media. I had a radio show for four years. Oh, did you? CFM. Was a Kappa's Raging Rock Words. Just ask oh, Warwick. One of the Gold Coast. Yeah, ring now and win. So I did that. Terrific. And I played three years at Southport. Semi-professional. Yeah. So I'm pretty good money back then. Good money and we um, won the flag that year. Yeah. So three years there. Had a radio show. I was the first to have... Guy to have a reality TV show uh -huh. called The Cappers. I made the Osbournes look like the Brady Bunch. Wow. And we had cameras in the house for um, three months. Amazing. Then I was in Penthouse, front page of Penthouse. Yeah, tell me about that. I, 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 I missed that one. Well, I was married to a model for 20 years, 27 years. Got a 23 year old son. And we thought we'd spunk it up a bit. And they, Penthouse rang us and they gave us 150 grand, which was a fair bit back then. Yeah. Back in 90, I think 91. And made the front page and. Um, Done various things since then. Amazing. It's been a good play drums and number one record. Tell me about the record. We uh, we listened to it on the way. Uh, I remember yeah. the song. It was a good. It had that sort of eighties feel yeah. to it. You I re-released it. I re-released it. Did you? And it's with a company called One, who are accountants, lawyers, a bit like yourself, and they used it. Um, I only claim what's mine. Claim it now. Claim it high. So the change came. To I used to be I only take what's mine. So that's out now. Can you um, can you sing the original version a bit? Just want to, I want to hear it again. Spotlights, hot lights, I don't believe it. Blue eyes, green eyes, I can believe it. I only take what's my. That was, that's, that's how it went. All, all those years ago. Do, do you sing it sometimes when you get up and sing? Yeah, especially when that, that commercial come out. Isn't and that leads to a new one called Telephone Number, which is coming out next week. Is it? I'm going to give you your fans an exclusive. Don't laugh behind the scenes. It's called Telephone Number. Girl, I want your number. Let me keep it, rip it, rip it, yeah. Call you up and see what's up. Baby, I got your number. I like it, bro. So I like I'll, it. I'll download that for your fans and we'll play that too. I like it. And, 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 you That's know, techno. Look, Bit of it. We might talk about that beautiful set on that song, or you know, all those uh, beautiful women and the men yeah. and all in the Ferrari. Uh, yep. uh, we'll be back very shortly with a great man, Warry Kappa. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Michael Kazilny. Tough times never last. We've had people um, on the couch who've gone to prison, we've had uh, contract killers, we've had uh, the police commissioner, we've had um, former chief magistrates, but uh, tonight, somebody more lively. Uh, the great man Kappa, who's been around and entertaining our screens and magazines for the last uh, 30 years plus. But um, uh, Warwick, uh, tell me about this mansion again. I, I really love the uh, the atmosphere. And um... all right, well, how it was how it was done? Michael was in back in '85. They wanted a bit of a face for the Swans. We're only getting 5,000 a game. They wanted 35. Edelson came in, bought half the team, and power play West Tech. Offered me a lot more. Me and Greg Williams and a few other players, which is great. We've got our contracts, so we tripled our contracts. I was going to go to Carlton, but they gave me a good, good deal. So they wanted the face. And they took a survey at the schools and they said, oh, Warwick's a bit of a lovely looking character. He looks like a bit like Duran Dur Dur Duran or in excess. So hence I bought the record out for the club and went number one on EMI. Unreal. And Tom Molly wrote it, who wrote Concrete and Clay. Yeah. That's how it started. Tell, tell me the feeling. Cast your mind back when, uh, you know, I've got 120,000... Uh, screaming fans of the great men up in the air. That was unreal. Um, huh? Yeah, great for the adrenaline, great adrenaline Terrific. rush. Terrific. Have you replaced that feeling with, uh, what's what's the most exciting thing you do these days? Probably, besides, uh, probably when I look in the, gymnastics. Probably when I look in the mirror. <laughs> I do those, um, those naughty movies and magazines, but yeah, I try to replace it. Yeah. I keep fit. Tell yeah. me about the naughty movies, that's, that's gutsy, that's living dangerously. Yeah, that was Have a, you ever read about a bloke called Osho? No, who's that? Oh, it's a book called Living Dangerously, but you certainly uh, break out of your comfort zone all the time. 
yeah, well, which I like, which people enjoy. Yeah, well, that's why I did a bit of... Um, you know, you're not a stiff neck. We you, did penthouse. So I was a sex writer for FHM yeah. and Zoo, three years. Fort Wendell Sailor, fixed yeah. him up for charity. We raised $250,000 for charity for the kids with cancer. I think it was about that much. And uh, Wendell raised about half that. And we had a three-round fight. And I was a bit sore after that. Cap, is it diff difficult for a playboy to settle down? <laughs> yes, I had the great Lisa for 12 years. And... Um, I've quietened out a bit now. Yeah, well, 54 in June. Well, I met the great Lisa, lovely lady, and she's, um, you know, a good couple. And uh, thanks, mate. It's bit like great. yourself. It's great that you're together. And I'm a 63 model. You're a 64 model. Yes, exactly. Yes, we. Um, oh, you know, we've got the great, good, two good, nice suits, all of us. Yes, and yes. We remember the old Chevron days, and uh, yes, of course, I used to run uh, Chevron sh and Shooters. Yes, yep. Shooters was a good place. You would, you would have been there when the beanbags were there, and everybody was yep. watching Melrose Place. You used to go to the Chevron Island you know, a couple of times yeah. um, every fortnight when I was down here because I was in Sydney. Oh, you in Sydney, yeah, that's you used to right. have the patent leather shoes. Yeah. I used to go to Double Bay. We used to call it Double Pay. Double Bay was great, wasn't it? Yeah, 10 minutes out of the city. And we used to go to the King's Cross, the bourbon and beefsteak. They, they sponsored us. And Kappa, isn't it sad when you see people um, successful, happy, with plenty of money in the bank? And I always think about um, good old Rene Rifkin, you know, because yeah. I met his son. I used to go to his nightclub. I used to love Double Bay. And, of course, that's where Michael Hutchins hung himself at the Ritz-Carlton there. That's right. Um, isn't it sad, though, how... Um, on in, on 60 Minutes, he said he was depressed and, yeah. and he's been thinking of suicide for a long time. Yeah, I met Renee a few times, did a few yeah. shows with him, went to the nightclub with him and yeah. you never know what's behind closed doors, Michael, do you? No. That's what's happened and he was no. depressed and so even half a million dollars doesn't make you happy. No, well, that's right. That's right. When you left your, um, your, um, your, your, st your you've always been in the uh, spotlight, but when you left the uh, footy career, yep. you would have had a few sort of, oh, God, what's next, you know? You, you would have gone through your lows Yep. Um, it, tell me about some of those tough times, Kevin. A lot of the players get a bit depressed. Yeah. Buddy Franklin and co, and he's, he's bounced back, which is great. And I had about 20 friends, because they're not recognised after that, their money gets cut by 90%. Yeah. So they've got to downsize everything. They spend more than they make. But I never did that. I always knew where I came from. And I went straight back in the media and lucky enough to get a few jobs and get on the speaking circuit. Yeah, good. Bounce out there and it keeps you involved in the game. Yeah. So I've had um, Terrific. the radio show and... Um, just various um, presentations and um, talks. I do about 70 shows a year. Amazing. So if anyone wants to do a talk on motivation and yeah. com comedy, they can book us through whiz 39 Kappa okay. at Gmail. Terrific. And we do a fundraiser for the club and we usually make the footy clubs um, about eight grand a night. Terrific. Stay three hours, give them a photo of myself, yeah. kiss the babies, kiss the swanettes, everyone's happy. Now, a lot of people think you're still on the Gold Coast, but you're, you're a Melbourneian now. You've come back after many, many years. Yeah, I had a place up there... 20 years and just sold that, and um, yeah. been down here about five years. Terrific. But I kept that quiet. Yeah. Better down here, more action. More action, you reckon? And we get over the Gold Coast, don't we? I sort of... Uh, yeah. yeah. Luck of the Commonwealth Games has come in because it's been in crisis for seven years, but yeah. it's a lot better now, and they're, they're getting more infrastructure. They spent 2.2 billion on the Gold Coast. Wow. I ran for mayor there. I, oh, didn't, that's I, didn't, right. I didn't get in there when I was right for zoo. And, and, and you, also, you, you were also interested in politics, Kappa? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was going to have three or four changes there, and they didn't like it. I said, all the old people have to get out and go back to um, Adelaide. If, if you're over 40, you have to get out. That was a joke. Then I th wanted to change the curfew for the nightclub, because I should shut up by 12 o'clock, because there's too many punch-ups like um, Sydney. Yeah. So. Well, you've been a good, uh, amazing role model for a lot of young people. There's a lot of gangsters uh, out there who, uh, who are selling ice, and uh, yeah, you know, good, everybody's using ice. What's, what's your advice on that? The, you know, gangsters were thinking... You know, even the Melbourne underworld, they think, well, that's, that, that's cool, yeah, it's that's lucrative. tough. And yeah. uh, everyone I, says jail's uh, a simple option. What, what's your view on that? On I try and, avoid, try and avoid that if I can. Yeah. And I try and get to the gym and just have a pre-workout. Good. Get a buzz that way and yeah. go there four or five days. Yeah. I'm the ambassador of Eating Time Fitness, so come down and see me. I'll get you a discount. Do you, talk, do you talk to young people, though, sometimes if you see them and sort of tell them yeah. to, to sharpen up? And, uh, I actually go to St Kilda. Bars where all the rehab is. So oh, I, oh, yeah. I, I do a lot of counselling for guys who have addicted to ice. I've had one guy for seven years. Yeah, I thought so, yeah. yeah I and they that. had three guys last week. One made it and the other, one, other two reoffended and went back. They couldn't yeah. help, it, help it. Yeah. They go to the sauna and swim. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then go in the ocean. Yeah, I do that. The, the little, yeah. um, the, the little uh, spa at the back yeah. there. Yeah. Except the old blokes that were still their jets, don't yeah. they? Yeah, come down and see us. Yeah, yeah. I've got, got my own jet. Have you? I've got my own bed. You've got the powerful one, have you? No, yeah, I love it. <laughs> Left-hand side. That's not bad. It's a, it's a river. <laughs> it's like and Bangkok. she usually goes there, too, isn't he? Yeah, it's like you're in Thailand. <laughs> we love it. I'm there in four weeks. You're there all the time? Yeah. Oh, you're going to... Yeah. yeah. 
good over there. I love yeah. it. And, t and tell me about um, uh, the... Um, the positive side of fitness, of training. What, what do you, you know, you look very fit. You look young. You look yeah. like a young fella. 54 soon. You know, what... Uh, the what, positive what, side is I had, two, I had two years I put a stone on, so I got rid of that. Started training about five years, four or five years ago and um, released a good endorphins. Good. Makes you feel good, positive endorphins. And you're doing a bit of meditation as well? Yeah. yeah. I can take a punch in my knee, my yeah. broken, broken thumb where Mick wow. Martin stood in my hand. I kicked six toes in him. Yeah. He was getting shitty. So he stood in my hand. It was only four degrees that day, the MCG. It was that cold. I had to sit up my ass, keep it warm. <laughs> and that's how many got size we'll six shorts. We'll take a break and then we'll do one more um, thing and then we'll let you go to do your cricket show or Thanks, your TV mate. show. But we'll be back very shortly. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for joining us. Tough times never last. Uh, Warwick, uh, what are you doing now? Tough times never last, Michael. I like that intro. Mm. What haven't I been doing? I've got um, 225 shops opening mm -hmm. next seven years. Yeah. I'm a shareholder, me and Lisa, um, in uh, Kappa's big and, big and Tasty Jaffles Amazing. and Cappuccinos. I had two Cappuccino trucks for oh, two years. Oh, you read about that? That, that was going yeah, really well, Yeah, that was on well, Sunrise. It? That was good. So we sold that for a bit of a profit. And I'm also the ambassador for uh, Anytime Fitness. So come and see us at Doncaster. Yep, yep. I'll give a good discount. I'm training there five days a week. And also the ambassador for Property AU here in the city. Right. Been going 22 years. Right. And we sell land, houses, rentals, and lots of land to the Chinese and Malaysians and, and everyone. So there's no slowing down the great man, Captain. There's no time to get depressed, mate. No time to get depressed. Were you ever depressed in your life? No. Nah. Never? I was once when the mirror broke. <laughs> and I ran out of makeup. I was actually I'm depressed when I got thrown out of Big Brother. Oh, that's right, Big Brother. And Neighbours. You were a Neighbours I as well. I Neighbours. I started Tell me about Big Brother and tell me about Neighbours. Big Brother was good. They actually got in the show. They ran me 25 times. I thought I'd better do it because um, they were shooting Channel 10 at um, Dreamworld. Yeah. One came to my place. So the ex-wife said, go on that. you kill it. They don't want to hate you. They probably hate you. They want to smash you. I said, okay, <laughs> why not? So I got a, good, got a good fee. Had a 10-day contract. But on the third day, Michael, I couldn't believe it. Everyone was getting nitty-gritty. That means shitty. I'm playing footy with myself. Had no friends. I had three friends. And they were three makeup girls. The rest were pricks, right? And Sarah Marie... Oh, she was that fat, she made me hungry. We had no food. She just smashed the buffet, so I was starving. <laughs> I was Lee Marvin for two days, right? On the third day, they started getting their tits out. They are walking around in their undies. I said, this is good, fringe benefits. But unfortunately, she was 28 kilos. So I thought, right, I'm going to stuff her up. I'm going to get the eight-day clock out from the toilet. and have, She can have a bit of a casual glance, Michael. So I got the old eight-day clock out, and they said, Warwick, how big's your penis? I said, three inches from the ground. They didn't laugh either. They said, Warwick, get to the diary room. That's inappropriate. So she dumped me in, Sam Marie, because she was an ex, she worked in the strip club. So she didn't care about nudity, but she was laughing. But they, 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 deep down, she was crying. First, she was going, oh, that's terrible. Then, then the Carl Sandlands, before he was a star, he was on there, 2003. The celebrity one, he goes, that's hilarious. He stuffed you girls up, you idiots. Put your tops on. <laughs> Warwick's done the best. And then at six in the morning the next day, the siren goes off. And if you, Michael, you forget there's cameras here, right? There's 85 cameras. So I was in heaven, but I forgot. They said, Warwick, get to the diary room. That's inappropriate. Get your stuff and please head out and see Big Brother. I said, what for? I had big baggy eyes, a shit haircut. Looked terrible, wasn't feeling comfortable. And they said, they can't do that. It's a family show. But we did love it. <laughs> Here's a bonus. <laughs> That's how I picked up 45. Very Warwick, funny. Warwick, what did the ex-wife say when, she, uh, when you came home? What Dark the hell are you doing home already, Warwick? <laughs> I said, sorry. She goes, you got the ass again. I said, yeah, I upset him. But same as Celebrity Apprentice. I lasted five days. Picked tell up a bit of money that. for that. Tell me about that. I... I'll tell you about Neighbours first. Yeah, tell me about Neighbours. In 85, because I was the face of the Swans with yeah. a hit record, yeah. they go, how's it like to be on Mackay and Oak? I said, where do I sign? How much an episode? About 10 grand? They go, 200. I said, shit. It's not great money. They said, but great exposure. It's in 75 countries. I said, right, do it free. Stuff it. Did it and it was number one. Amazing. And I remember that. Three episodes. I was, three episodes. Uh, I was in the coffee shop with um, the guy with big ears, Dez. Remember? <laughs> right. And I made, I made Kylie a swanette. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Right. Then I went to Celebrity Apprentice. And what were your lines on, on there? I remember that. Yeah. I remember. G'day, Dez. Yeah. And Kylie yeah. goes, G'day, Warwick. Gee, he's a bit of a spunk. And guess what, Dez? They've just, he's just told me that we're going to be um, swanettes. That me is and amazing. J me and Jane. 
And 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 you sort of befriended Kylie after that? Yeah, just friends of the family. Yeah, it's good. terrific, isn't it? So it was good. Then I was lucky enough to get on Celebrity Apprentice. Yeah, that was with Burros. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Where was that filmed? In Sydney, that was in wasn't Sydney. It? I was supposed to have three weeks and lasted three days. But anyway, tell tell me about that. Which team were you on there? I was on the boys' team. Yeah. Uh, and Ivan was mixed. I had Pauline Hanson, she was good, but they get the wrong side of her. She gets a bit shitty, but he's a friend of mine, my friends of her son. And we had Max Marks in the agent. Mm -hmm. So he had a conflict of interest because he got us a show. Mm -hmm. He gets percentage. Then he tried to give me ass because I wasn't washing enough cars. They set me up. It was 40 degrees in Sydney. He wasn't supposed to wash, wash, wash 16 cars. I washed four, had a cup of tea. I go, go and sit down, Warwick. You deserve a rest. I said, well, well, I'm waiting on cars. I've done four. And then Shane Crawford tips water over my head, breaks my sunglasses, so breaks my makeup. So I smashed him. Then I got evicted. And you're supposed to raise at least 10 grand each. Boy George actually raised, I think, 295,000. I raised 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't like, I don't like asking people for money. <laughs> Mocky, you got five grand? Oh, you're funny, Cathy. So it's been, it's been a good ride, mate. So I've been on every show possible. Current affair 12 times, good uh, 60 them. minutes. And I'm sure we've got some, uh, some um, many more ch projects where you'll be entertaining people. Do you find people uh, in the last sort of 10 years of getting very down and depressed and yeah. every person you speak to, you know, anxiety and depression? And yeah. I'm, you know, isn't that a lot of bullshit, you they know? They spend it's... more than they earn. They get depressed. They're yeah. on, the, on the drugs. Get off the drugs, mate. Get the gym. You don't see many people smiling anymore. That's why you're such a breath of fresh air wherever you go. Yeah. Yeah? yeah that's why I'm going tonight, the suburban footballer. It's going to be fantastic. So yeah, I'll tell me about that. That's, I'll, uh, I'll give what, that a what's plug. that all about? You... Oh, it's just a one-man show, so I'll, I'll, I'll go and give him some lines. Yeah. And then I'll go and take my show, the Quickie Footy Show with Shane Warren. And what's that all about? That's interesting. That's uh, that, ha, ha... that's um, reality TV on the phone, so it's yeah. a cricket show. Yeah. And you can ask your favourite sporting personality questions about five sports all around the world. Kevin um, Peterson's in it. Amazing. Adam Cooney, Rodney Eade. He when did that start? Um, two weeks ago. And, and Rodney Eade might be there full time soon. I think they'll start winning the game, the Suns. And it, so it's on every, when is it? Every Sunday, Monday. Every Sunday, Monday. There's a cricket Monday. show live and footy show. Okay. So um, anyone in Australia can download and you can speak to people around the world. Isn't that amazing? Just cricket.com. Wow. Capo, there's a lot of um, people out there, young people, who are just completely confused with their lives. They hate school, you know, they. I know. They don't sort of um, don't know what to do, but um, they're just depressed. What's your advice to um, to achieve success for? Um, You've got to have a purpose people. in life, Michael. You've yeah, tell me about that. Get out more of the garden, clean the spa, mow the lawn, do something. Yeah. Get out of bed at eight thirty. Don't sit in there at ten at ten o'clock, playing with yourself and playing with your face. Leave it to me. Get out early and get the gym three to four days a week, and get a part time job or a full time job, something you like. There's plenty of jobs out there. The overseas uh, immigrants don't mind working. So Australians, get out there and do it. Good advice, Kepa. Thank you very Thanks, much, Rose. bro. You've been well. Love you like a brother. Thank you very much, viewers, uh, for great. watching. Tough times never last. Have a fantastic week and um, we'll see you very shortly. I'm Michael. Good night.